I went ahead and set it to record. So we should be good to go. All right. So I'm going to click share screen here. Oh, looks like I can't do that. Um, can you uh, set it to the where multiple? Yeah, I think you just did it there. All right. Can everybody see my screen now? Yep. Yes, we can. Oh, look, right. there's our there's our article. Uh, I didn't check awesome. folk today. Folk states five theta kappa chapters combined. All right. So uh, good morning. My name is Jared. I'm one of your librarians here on the uh, Winter Haven campus. And today I'll be showing you how to use the library system. Uh, we'll spend most of our time looking at databases and how to research articles. We'll talk a little bit about APA style as well. So um, to get started, uh, we're here at Polk State College's homepage. And we'll be click library TLCC. This, of course, brings us to our joint access page that we share with the TLCC. Um, here you can see our most frequently accessed links um, under each area for students' convenience. Uh, we've also got our hours of operation and also our contact information there as well. Um, another thing I want to point out on this page, um, as you're researching with our library system, if you ever have questions, we have this Ask a Librarian uh, feature. It's built into most of our search interfaces. So if you see that little question mark in the Ask a Librarian logo, uh, you can essentially chat with the librarian during hours of operation. Uh, when we're closed, that turns into an email service. So you, know, you can get help if you're at home or if you're away from campus, uh, chat with the librarian about whatever it is you may be researching. So uh, this first link, book slash catalog, this is ideal for searching our print collection also our ebook collection, um, as well as um, our AV collection. So that's going to include um, online videos in our databases and also uh, print, uh, not print media, uh, physical media like DVDs that are housed in the library. The next link, article slash databases, this is where we'll be um, going today. This takes us out to our database collection. And um, we've had a change. We're about a year over into our change. So it could look a little different to you if you've um, seen it previous to prior to this uh, orientation. So when you click articles slash databases, you'll get a library guide that has a list of all of our databases. Um, as you can see, we have over 100 in this collection. So it's very plentiful. There's a lot going on here. Um, the good news is a lot of our um, databases come from a smaller number of vendors. So some of them uh, look identical. Um, so for example, um, Academic Search Complete is an EBSCO database. So other EBSCO databases like APA Psych Articles, um, also Applied Science and Technology, they'll all have the same look. Um, same is true for Academic One File. Uh, that's a Gale databases, a Gale database. And um, there are several uh, of those. Um, here's a little, uh, little quick look at kind of what I'm talking about here. So 28 of them are from EBSCO, 35 of them are from Gale. So seeing one database kind of gives you a a good, a good idea of what the majority of them look like. So the, the database we typically like to demonstrate for people first is uh, Academic Search Complete. It's one of our larger databases and it, uh, we like to think of it as sort of our Google um, of the library database collection. Uh, of course, the same is sort of true about Academic OneFile as well. So um, when we click Academic Search Complete, we will be asked to log in. Um, for students, of course, you'll choose student login. For staff, um, faculty and staff, we have a different login system. Now, I'm, not, I'm unable to show you 
the student login, but essentially what happens after you click student login, you'll see a passport screen pop up and you'll essentially log in using your uh, Polk passport credentials. So the exact same way that you log into passport is the sign in credentials for uh, all online library resources. We uh, have single sign on, so that's, you know, one password to rule them all. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here with the staff option. Now the system in the background that you're not really seeing here is called Open Athens. It essentially authenticates us. And it tells the online resources, hey, give this person access. And the reason that that is sort of important is uh, once you log in to the, uh, the system, and I'm using Google Chrome here, the same uh, is true for Firefox. Uh, the, these are the two databases that we recommend, that's not databases, excuse me, uh, web browsers that we recommend that you use. And it's essentially a session long sign-in. So as long as Chrome is open, as long as Firefox is open, you'll be logged in. All right, so um, here is Academic Search Complete. Uh, once again, it's an EBSCO database. So this kind of blue and white interface is what you can expect from most of our EBSCO databases. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see that Ask a Librarian feature that I mentioned when we were on the homepage. And, you know, gives you the ability to chat with a librarian if you need help. Um, you can always hit no thanks to tuck that away as well. Um, before we get into the keywords, I want to kind of briefly discuss the search options below. These are um, some of these search options you'll see across uh, databases. Um, full text is a probably the most important one to talk about. Uh, when you check off the full text search limiter, that ensures that your search results will all contain um, full text articles. Not checking that, you'll end up with some results that may just be uh, publication information. Uh, sometimes they'll have abstracts. And, uh, abstracts are summaries of articles. So um, when you're doing research, uh, you typically are going to need that full text article. So you can save yourself some hassle of kind of sifting through results by um, always checking off that full text search limit. The uh, next search limiter that I want to discuss is of particular importance today because you guys are focusing on peer-reviewed literature as you're doing your research uh, process. So um, you'll definitely want to check this off as well. So um, I think you all are probably familiar with the peer review, but if anyone's not, I'll, I'll kind of briefly describe it. Uh, peer review is a process used by a publication um, to legitimize its uh, publication. So um, as a librarian, I, my expertise is in library and information science. So if I write an article and submit it to, you know, the Journal of Library and Information Sciences, and if they employ a peer review process, what they'll do is they'll take my article, they'll find other uh, professionals in the field, so other librarians, and they'll say, hey, can you look through this for us? Look for anything that's inaccurate. Look for anything that isn't fit for publication. And once it kind of goes through that peer review process, um, it kind of cert it certifies the information essentially. So um, you can see why your professors would, would sometimes say to you, hey, make sure you use peer reviewed only because it, the information is just vetted differently than um, you know, things that appear in blogs, um, things that we may just come across randomly on Wikipedia or something like that. So it's just um, a type of resource to be aware of and, and to use um, when you're uh, writing research papers. Um, so um, outside of that, there are other search limiters, um, but I do want to kind of caution you, uh, depending on the type of search you're doing, you don't want to do too much on the front end. Many of these search limiters like language, uh, publication type, these will be available to you after you've uh, entered your keywords and hit search as well. So starting out, we've got full text checked off. We've got peer review checked off. 
Um, another one I'll briefly mention here, but we'll also talk about it on the back side of the search, is the publish publication uh, date for your article. Sometimes your directions will be, hey, only use things from the last two years, only use things from the last five years. Um, so just sort of depending on if you have any publication date restrictions, uh, you can use that here or once again on the back side of the search. So now um, we can enter some keywords and do a search together here. Um, do we have any um, suggestions? Could we look up something like kindergartners and literacy? Yeah, okay, great. Wanna, MG, do you want to briefly describe the project? So to give Jared a better idea of what we're, what we're going to do. Well, sure. just as far as we know, right? Within. Um, so, so far we're trying to see what we can do to help kindergartners and first graders and second graders with their literacy levels. See if we can maybe design a program in elementary schools to help them learn how to read better or create videos. We're trying to figure out what exactly that project would look like because we do need to speak with the schools first. Um, and our second project is we're going to completely revamp the greenhouse at the Winter Haven campus, just totally gut it and plant, like replant everything in there, fix everything up and plant a lot of fruit and vegetables and harvest all of the food to put in my brother's keeper. Okay, the re now that the, re the, the research part is going to be the kindergartners only, remember, MG, not the the greenhouse doesn't require research. Okay. All right, fantastic. So um, just based on that, that, that um, search, I kind of want to show you something else here. Um, so um, once again, this is academic search complete. And a nice thing about EBSCO's databases is that you can search through multiple databases at, all at once. So the reason I'm bringing that up is uh, an education database would be a great place to start for a search like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay in search complete. I'm going to click choose databases. And is that pop up showing up well on your, your screen there? It is. OK, great, great. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in Eric. Eric is an education database. Um, it's a great place to look anytime you need um, whether it's K through 12, college, university level, um, just anything related to education, it's a great place to go. So I'm gonna have those two checked off and I'll even include education source. So we're gonna do our search and it's gonna simultaneously search through all three of these databases that we have checked off. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. All right, awesome. So we'll click okay here. And now that we've selected those databases, we can see that they're all listed, that, that we're searching through them. And um, we'll just start briefly, we'll, we'll go with kindergarten. Oh, you gotta spell it right. And then we'll talk about literacy. Is that how you put it, literacy? Um, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure I wasn't uh, getting that wrong. There. All right. So we're going to check off full text and peer reviewed again. And we'll hit search. Oh, butchered it again, didn't I? There we go. All right. Search one more time. All right, so wow, wow, wow. We got 4,000 results. That's quite a bit, probably a little more than we want to um, comb through. So um, what I'll do now is I'll show you how you can make this a little bit more concise. Uh, one of the big ways that this is done is um, by publication date. Um, so typically, um, I'll look at the last 10 years first, just sort of depending on the, the subject matter for the search. 
So um, I'll do that now. Just kind of update this to 2012. All right, so we got rid of about almost 2,000 results there. So that's a good start. Um, other things we can do, um, I typically like to restrict by language as well. That doesn't get us too much, but we'll apply the English language restrictor as well. And another one that this will make more sense as we look at an article. Um, in fact, I'll show you an article before I uh, show you that. So um, the contribution of play experiences and early literacy, expanding the science of reading. Actually, that actually sounds right up the, uh, the alley. Mm -hmm. It, it's perfect. always great when the first one <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's a full text yeah <laughs> so um let's click we'll click on the title of the article and i want to talk a, a little bit about what this publication page that we're seeing <clears throat> excuse me have a little bit of water here all right so this article <clears throat> was published in Reading Research Quarterly. Uh, we've got our authors listed here. And uh, the important thing that I wanted to point out here are the subjects listed. So with, um, with searching in databases for articles, um, subjects are gonna be fairly important. Um, they're gonna help you find synonyms to create secondary searches. These work essentially like hashtags in social media. So like if you think about if you're on Twitter, and you, know, you search for a hashtag, all the tweets that contain that hashtag are populated on a list for you, right? So the same thing is essentially occurring here within the databases. So we used literacy in kindergarten, as you can see, they're bolded. But now we can also, you know, after we've exhausted this search, we may go, well, let me look at preschool education. Or let me look at reading comprehension. You know, just if something pops out in this article that we like, it's now supplying us with more keywords that we can use to um, find additional articles that may work for us. So that's uh, the, always take a look at those subjects, particularly when you find an, an article that works for you. Now, um, the next thing I want to point out is the abstract. Um, it's a pretty good idea in terms of process. Once you find an article, you know, the title interests you, uh, read through that abstract. It's going to briefly summarize what you can expect in the article. And, you know, this will inform that decision of do I, do I want to spend more time with this full text article or should I move on to something else, right? So uh, once you read through it, if you say, yeah, let's definitely look at this. Um, the other nice thing about this particular article as an example is we've got two views. So if I just kept scrolling, uh, I'd see the article and this is essentially a HTML you know, web page view of the article. So I'm just kind of scrolling through here so you can see that we got our references for the article at the end. We got the different subsections as well. Um, so that is a web page view. Um, I recommend that anytime you see a PDF is available, go ahead and click that version of the article. And I'll show you why here. Uh, when you click PDF, you simply get an Adobe uh, PDF view comes up. This is essentially you know, everything you've seen on the web. Uh, with PDF articles. And as you can see, this is what it looked like when it was originally published. So there's our abstract. Um, and then it kind of goes into our article. Let me kind of blow that up a little. There we go. And so um, the nice thing here is we have page numbers. So anytime that we need to uh, do a direct quote for the article, we can, um, we can bring that up. Uh, page number information into uh, the in-text uh, citation. So I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Um, another thing that comes up with the PDF view sometimes over the HTML view 
there are any pictures, if there are any charts, graphs, any data sort of things. Sometimes those are only available in the PDF view and not in the uh, HTML view. So that's another reason to kind of uh, prefer that PDF version. All right, so um, there are two toolbars available to us here. The first one just being a, a kind of a generic Adobe one, allows us to download the article to our devices, allows us to print the article as well, as well as zooming in and out. Now the secondary toolbar, it might be kind of difficult to see um, on your screen here, but it's over here on the right. Yeah, this is basically a EBSCO uh, toolbar. So that first um, icon there looks like Google Drive. It's exactly what it is. Basically allows you to save the article to Google Drive. Um, and of course, you have to sign in to your Google um, account to do so. Uh, next icon allows you to print the article in its entirety. And then the third one allows you to uh, email it to yourself. So this is typically the one I stress to students as you're in the research process. Um, you just got to, you know, just think about it. You may do, um, you know, 10 to 15 different searches or, you know, whatever number of them. Uh, trying to remember the exact keywords that you use to find that specific article that may have been on like the fourth page of search results can be a little, you know, tough to keep track of. So it's a good idea once you find what you want, um, go ahead and email it to yourself so that you don't have trouble tracking it back down. And you can use your personal email, you can use your uh, Polk email, whichever you prefer. Another nice thing, uh, uh, aside from getting the PDF uh, sent to your email address, uh, if you click citation format, you're able to uh, tell the database, hey, also send me that APA citation. So I'll have my, my uh, reference for my reference page as well in my email address. And then I just click send. It's normally pretty instantaneous. If you don't see it in your inbox, um, check spam, of course, just to make sure it didn't get uh, jumped or something like that. Um, the other, there are two more I want to point out. Um, so if you're building your citation or your reference page, rather, as you're working, you'll see that goal. It looks like a gold sheet of paper with uh, text on it. This is essentially a citation um, generator. So we just click there and we're able to copy and paste the style we need. So as you can see, APA is there, MLA is there. So you just wanna make sure you grab the right one that you need. So we just copy. Um, one other note, uh, as you can see, there is some italics, are some italics on the uh, journal title as well as the volume number for the journal. So it's important as you're copying and pasting to your uh, documents that that information is um, italicized there as well. All right, so let me change my share here. I'm just bringing up a Word document that I have. Did that come up for you? Yep. All right, awesome. So I'm just going to paste this in and I've already got my uh, formatting established for this document. I got Times New Roman, I got size 12, I got double spacing as well. So I'm just gonna tell it, hey, match the formatting that I have previously established in my document. And I didn't want bullets, so let's take that off. And there we go. All right, so um, we're gonna come back to that after we grab a couple more citations so I can show you a couple little tricks to uh, keep in mind. So back to the screen. All right. 
So um, getting back to our search results page, once we're done viewing an article, best way to do that is not with the back button, it's with the results list button in the top left corner. And the reason that's a good idea is that takes you to the exact place you were in the search results. So once again, if you're on page five, it takes you right back to the point that you left off at. All right, so I'm um, gonna we'll scroll down a little bit here. Does anybody see anything else that looks, that catches your interest? What about kindergarten scores, storytelling, yep. executive function, and motivation? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Through nice. literacy rich guided play. Because the theme for uh, honors in action for this year and for next year is the art and science of play. Oh, okay. So cool. ha having the mix of, of play with literacy um, is like, like just definitely going to be uh, kind of key. Awesome. So um, we'll click here. And uh, it's essentially the same idea. I just kind of wanted to give you a couple examples of it. So there's our abstract. There are our subjects. And PDF full text. And so I'm just going to copy and paste this again, this reference, so that we can uh, do a little bit more with that in just a moment. All right. So I'm going to grab one more just to make this good. And site. So All right, so jumping back now over to our Word doc. All right, so here I have three citations. And just wanna show you a couple of shortcuts here. Um, first one being uh, for hanging indentation. A uh, quick way to do that, particularly by a keyboard shortcut is to highlight everything. And if you're using Windows, it would be Control T. If you're using a, a Mac, it would be Command T. And that essentially formats the hanging indent for you. So once again, that's Control T on Windows and Command T on an Apple device or a Mac rather. Um, the other thing I want to show you uh, is just uh, sorting. Uh, particularly with Microsoft uh, Word, if you take all of your citations, so this could be done with three, this could be done with 30 citations. Um, you just use the sort button and it's got a capital A and a capital Z on it. You click there, paragraph text ascending order, and you click OK, and it formats it in alphabetical order based on that first letter of each entry. Um, any questions about that, uh, those uh, shortcuts or little tips or tricks? I don't have any. Do you guys have any questions? All right, great. All right, so um, uh, gives you a little bit more background on APA there. So now we'll go back and all right, so we showed you Eric, we showed you education source, two of our more popular um, education databases. Suppose it'd be good to show you one from Gale too, just so you can see the um, kind of the difference in interface. 
All right, so um, we're just gonna close the database to get back to our list. Um, from there, I'm just gonna restrict this to just Gale. And I think I'll use educators reference complete. Um, there's actually a few that probably would make sense here, but I think that's the one we'll go with. All right, so when we click that database title, we're once again still in the same browser session. So Open Athens just opens it right up without us having to log in again. And so this is typically what your Gale interface will look like. Um, so if you think about our peer review limiters that we used before, full text and also peer reviewed. So we can check both of those off. Then we can do that same search. Kindergarten and literacy. All right, so um, much smaller, more concise search results list here, 277. Let's see what that got us. Phonics and play literacy, parental expectations, harvesting. Literacy. Anything here looking interesting to us? Um, what about phonics and play literacy? Parental expectations? Yes, that one. That's a, that's a good one, yeah. All right, so that one comes from the Australian Journal of Language and Literacy. Is there a any sort of geographical limitation uh, for this? Like, are you focusing on uh, just things from the United States or is it whatever you find? Uh, it's whatever we find. Okay, awesome, awesome. All right, so there's our abstract that we are accustomed to seeing. Um, and as you can see, our, our keywords are, are highlighted. So that's great with um, you know, bringing your attention right to what you wanna see. And then there's, so this article is basically a web, web, pa web page view. So as you can see, as we're scrolling through, they've actually got um, the charts and stuff in there as well. Doesn't look like they have a PDF for this one. Right. So um, the same sort of expectations can be had here. Um, in the event that we want to email it to ourselves, there's a toolbar up top here on the right. So we can click send to and then email and send it to ourselves. Um, now you'll notice you can uh, click citation as well you can also send the pdf i think the html one the full text uh the full text send as one uh option sends that web page view so you got the pdf there and then you got um send the citation as well now um actually citing is done as well in that same toolbar. So we click site and you just gotta choose the version you need. So there's our APA. And you can just kind of copy and paste that. All right, back to our results. And that's essentially the process. Um, so you just kind of go through your results list, pull out the things that are, are interesting to you so that you can kind of do a more in-depth literature review uh, on your subject. Um, do we have any questions about uh, either academic search complete, uh, uh, educate Gales, Educators reference complete any of the databases we viewed today. I don't have any questions. Do you guys? I mean, it's, yeah, it seems pretty straightforward for them and yeah. and um, you know kids will will address specifics. Um, like we usually tell them start within the last say 
three ish, maybe four ish years. Uh, if it's a popular subject, uh, full text so they can download it and share it on our, our Google Drive so everyone can read the articles. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it seems it seems like uh, we also, you know, we're using some databases we normally don't use. Uh, a lot of our data uh, research projects tend to be in science. Uh -huh. um, so this one is obviously is not. So okay. it's good that uh, they get to see a couple new databases because some of them went through the training last year too. Well, I also want to invite you to uh, uh, this. Here's my email on the screen. Here's my uh, phone number as well. So if you have any questions as you're using the system, um, you know, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to help you kind of troubleshoot any uh, roadblocks you get to. And uh, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much. This has been so helpful. Great, great. Uh, thanks Thank for having me. Thank you very much for for showing them the, the ropes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.